Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager, Whole Latte Love, and today we're gonna to talk about cleaning your steam wand. All right. So important stuff. Important <laughs> stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, you this is one do. of those things, this is this is not just a daily practice, this is every time you use your machine, you gotta be making sure that you're keeping it clean as a whistle. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody did not <laughs> clean this very well. Uh, so you may see this from time to time. You're moving quick, you steam your drink, move to the, move on to the next part, and you forgot to wipe it off. I'm guilty, so, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I set it up for you. Every, yeah. ev everyone's guilty, okay. but you're, you're definitely guilty because you did it, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you'll end up getting this little skin of yummy milk built up on the outside here. And that's not um, really all that bad, right? You've seen some pretty crazy stuff in your time. Right? I've seen some very amazing things. <laughs> uh, I was doing commercial uh, work for many years before coming to Whole Latte Love, and some of the things that you see out in the field are... Yeah? Yeah. He so, mentioned skunky boilers and all kinds of crazy Skunking stuff. a boiler is a whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's one of those things that can happen. It's a very specific sequence of failures that happen in the valve and on the boiler that could create a siphoning effect that can pull milk from the pitcher back into the boiler. Uh, very, very rare. I hope it never happens to anyone who's yeah. watching this because it smells really, really bad. Okay. So, but. Uh, but you can get a similar situation where your wand will end up stinking because it's not properly being cleaned. So mm -hmm. always good to make sure that you're cleaning it out, purging it out, wiping it down, all that fun stuff. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to show you today. Okay. Um, so first thing we're going to do, this is still pre pretty fresh on here. It's not horribly on there. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you cleaning just that off for starters. Uh, then I'll show you the proper method of purging your steam wand after use. Okay. So right now, all I've got is a pitcher with some water. No cleaning chemicals or anything like that. If you do have some over there. Yep, yeah. if your buildup's really bad, you can use Rinza. Uh, mm -hmm. This stuff's great. Uh, you can, uh, I'll say method is what I'm gonna show you with the water, only you would add an ounce of this to 16 ounces of water. Okay. Okay, so. All you're gonna do is steam your milk, only you're steaming mm -hmm. water. So okay. you wanna get the water to warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, really what's left on here is uh, the proteins from the milk. Mm -hmm. So when they get heated up, they'll start getting ooey gooey again, as you can see there. So just steam it up a little bit more. Then take your rag and wipe it off. Um, that came off pretty good. Also remember, good. right afterwards, give it a good purge. Always purge after steaming, right? Always. Always. So okay. now that we got some nasties in here, I'm gonna get us some fresh water. It's a good idea, make sure you're switching your water out in between purges like this so that you're just not pulling more dirty water back in there. Mm -hmm. uh, good to do that one more time just to make sure that you're getting everything out. And so when you close your tap, it builds a little bit of a vacuum that's gonna actually pull some of that water. Same thing's gonna happen with your milk. So it pulls that milk up in there. That's why it's so important to make sure that you're purging afterwards so that you get any of the milk residue that's up inside to oh, come right. out. Okay. So, say we just, you know, pretending this milk. Okay, blah, blah, blah. See with my drink. Done. Take a rag. Purge. Use that steamy rag to wipe off your wand. And that's really all it takes. Mm -hmm. um, I generally like to purge for at least two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit longer, doesn't hurt it. Okay. Um, Best just to make sure you do everything you can to get everything out of there. So. Now if you're really caked on, then you go to a product like the Rinza over there. Yep, yeah, and the Rinza's great. It has instructions right on the back of it with little pictures and everything showing you how to do it uh, for all different types of machines as well, so. For those of us who don't like to read, we get the pictures. Yeah, okay. okay. so let's say you uh, steamed your milk and then it was looking kind of like it did when we started this process, only you left it there for a day or two, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really on there. You can do what I just showed you with the hot milk uh, that will eventually get it cleared off, but if you want it to get really, really clean, 
Mm -hmm. Rinse will get done much quicker. Okay. Um, so say also if you did leave it sitting there for a really long time and now all of a sudden you open your steam wand and you got, you know, only coming out of one of your holes or nothing's coming out at all, mm -hmm. um, you can remove your steam tip. Uh, this one's really hot right now, <laughs> so see if I can get it without burning myself too bad. There we go. I'd wait until it's cool if I were you. Yeah. But to each his own. Uh, so obviously there's the little holes right at the bottom there. You can see through. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can't see through it, uh, you can use something like a little scratch all, or uh, I've seen people use paper clips. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say if you use a paper clip, paper clips often have a little like plastic sleeve wrapped around them. Don't want to so, leave that behind. Yeah, <laughs> don't leave that behind in there because I've had that actually happen in the field before where they, okay. oh, we tried so hard to get this cleaned and it kept getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it is possible to, for a couple reasons, you can actually shove, if that milk is getting solidified, you can shove it further up into your tube here uh -huh. uh, and block it up even more. Or you can leave behind that little plastic skin from the paper clip. So okay. I always recommend trying to use like a little really small uh, scratch awl or uh, if you have really small Allen wrenches, like mm -hmm. a, you know, half millimeter, one millimeter, will you generally fit inside those? So you could use that too. Okay. Um, but if the buildup is really bad in there, you can also just take that off, put it in a cup of hot water with a little bit of Rinza in it, let it sit for, you know, 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. The rinse is nice because it's not really caustic. It's not gonna start wearing off the uh, coating to any of this, so. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying leave it there for a couple days because right. I've never <laughs> tested it that long, but right. I left it on there for probably about half an hour before and never seen any negative effects from okay. it, so. Um, but yeah, so you can take that off and throw it in there and let it soak so that it's in there real, uh, working its magic for a while. Mm -hmm. Then you can ream it out and get it nice and clean. Okay. Um, well, we have the tip off, I will talk about inside the tube. So mm -hmm. you've got on this machine, we have the uh, no burn tube. Mm -hmm. So you can use these brushes. Uh, they are great for cleaning out steam wands, especially if you got a lot of buildup in there. Problem is, is that some of these, this one will fit all right. Mm -hmm. But you got to be kind of gentle if you're doing it on the no burns like this mm -hmm. um, is a much tighter area. And if you pull too hard when you're bringing it back out, you can actually pull the, pull the whole tube out. Uh, so that's again why regular maintenance, making sure that you're flushing it every time mm -hmm. is important because you don't want to risk pulling that all the way out. Now, could you soak something like that with some of that, you know, Rinza solution to maybe help up in there or? You need, you oh, to get up it. in there? Yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so the same idea is when we're doing uh, the soaking process is that's exactly what you're going to do with the Rinza is you're going to open it up, mm -hmm. get the water warm. And then when you close it, pulls that up pulls into up so there. So that's, bit. yep. So you'll have the Rinza and the water mixed together, soaking inside the tube there. Okay. Um, so takeaways here are like wipe your wand when you're done. And, yep. And wipe, purge. Wipe and purge. Wipe and purge. Mm, yep. Uh, it was really the most important things. Uh, it definitely doesn't hurt to, uh, you know, if you do your regular maintenance on your group head, say, you know, every few weeks or something, mm -hmm. you take it apart and lubricate your cam or something like that. I like to try and batch all of the general service things that I do into one process. That way I don't have to do it over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I'm doing that, that's when if I, you know, if I'm using my machine that doesn't have a no burn tube on it, uh, I'll give it a good scrub out with this just preventatively. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will soak my steam tip. Okay. Um, especially because my seven-year-old has started learning to make lattes. So, oh. uh, you know. Start them young. Got to get him to remember <laughs> to purge, right. you know. Okay. So uh, that's very important. So I, I always try to make sure I do that when I'm uh, doing my regular maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll also jump over to the hot water side. Yeah. Now, you think, eh, I'm just emptying water out of here if mm -hmm. you're even using it, so why do I really need to do anything to it? Um, yeah, for the most part, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that you do want to check occasionally is your screen in here. It's just like on the faucet in your kitchen. Yeah. Uh, that front part screws off, you got a little screen down there, 
and this little green filter here uh, looks different on other machines, but mm -hmm. on the rockets, this is what you'll see. Uh, what you're looking for is any kind of scale buildup in here. Uh, you just want to take that off. You can dust it off. You could put in uh, a little vinegar or something like that, just some light decalcifier mm -hmm. just to clean it out so that water runs through there smoothly. Uh, but that's about all you really need to do when it comes to cleaning this. However, what I like to do, again, with my regular cleaning schedule, mm -hmm. is I got that over to the side. This is pro tip territory. I pro tip, into. yes, okay. sir. Um, so the, without getting too far off subject here, it's uh, people ask a lot about uh, regular decalcification of machines. Mm -hmm. And well, if you're treating your water really well, then you shouldn't need to worry about that too much. Mm -hmm. But the best way to prevent needing to do a descale on a machine is by regularly flushing. So I do this every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go through the full process, but mm -hmm. brief description of what it is, is I'll let the machine get fully heated up like it is right now. Mm -hmm. I will turn it off and I will open this tap and let it flush water out until it's done. Mm -hmm. Then it'll turn the machine on, let it refill and do that two, maybe three times. Okay. That way what you're doing is you're completely refreshing your boiler with as much clean water as you can and it'll loosen up any uh, light scale that you're gonna get building up in there before it gets a chance to actually build up. And that's, so, I mean, that's really important. If you only ever steam, you're concentrating minerals in that boiler when you steam, right? Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's one of those scenarios where it's like, all right, oh, I never use this. It's like, well, do, yeah, you probably do. should. <laughs> yeah, pro tip, yeah. do. Do use it. Even if you're not using it for consumption, use yeah. it just for a flush. Sure. So I always like to use a clear glass. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's okay to, you know, Pyrex, we're good. Yep. Don't use a water cup, you may shatter it. Uh, but the nice thing is, clear glass is you can, whoa! Yeah. Do keep in mind that the, uh, power behind it when you don't have the screen, the screen on there, on there. is yeah. uh, a little bit more blasty. So, you shall see, actually see it in there right now. You see it spinning yep. around in there. That's some light uh, dusting of scale that's inside the boiler. Mm -hmm. So this machine is actually due for this refresh because I can tell by that amount that's in there. That, that amount does not tell me that you're like packed full. It's small, it's grainy. If you look at it, it's like free floating in there. So mm -hmm. it's really, really loose, really, really light. And it's not hard to get it to flush out just by doing this. So all that water is coming off the bottom of the boiler where that stuff by gravity is just kind of hanging out, right? Yes, exactly. So, so and that's uh, important to keep in mind is that, you know, your steam side comes off the top of the boiler where the steam is and mm -hmm. the hot water comes off the bottom of the boiler. So if you ever have no flow coming out of here, that's a good sign that you, you got some, some scale buildup clogging it up in there. So, all right. um, but yeah, as far as cleaning the hot water side, that's about all you really need to worry about. Um, unless you're doing something really weird, I don't, I don't know what you would be doing. They would get <laughs> dirty, but uh, generally people don't submerge the wand in anything. So mm -hmm. that's about all there is so for that. Wipe your wand. Purge Wait your one. steam on and turn over some water in that boiler every once in a while, all right? Exactly. All right, Brian, thanks so much for taking us through that. Anytime.